Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our first person shooter by adding some new things to it. The first thing that we're going to add is a reload system so that you get 10 bullets to shoot. And then once you shoot off those 10 bullets, you can no longer fire the gun. If you press the letter R, you can reload the gun. And then once you reload the gun, then you can shoot again. Another thing that we're going to add is a click to zoom in, and we're going to be using the right part of the mouse to do this. So whenever the user clicks down on the right part of the mouse, it's going to zoom in. And then as soon as they release that, it's going to zoom out. And finally, we're going to update the mouse icon to the one you see on the screen. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and start by what we're going to add to the gun itself, and then we'll take a look at what we have to update on the scripts. So for the gun, I went ahead and put this in the starter pack so that the player starts with it as soon as they enter the game. And then what we're going to be adding to this is a few different things. So the first thing that I want you to add is a int value. So to do that, if you click on your gun and then click on the plus sign, we're going to be adding an int value. So you're going to search int, and it should come up. And you're going to go ahead and select it right here. After that, you're going to rename it to ammo and make sure you use a capital A. Go ahead and open up your int value. And for the value section, this is going to be the amount of bullets you want to set for your gun. So for the handgun, I set it at 10. But if you have a gun that you want to hold more ammo, you can increase that. But if you have some type of either sniper or shotgun, then you probably want to use a lower value. Okay, and the other things that we're going to be adding are different sounds for the reload and also for the empty clip. And all those you can find in the toolbox. If you look under the audio section, you can search for different things like reload, empty clip, empty magazine, and then just choose whatever sounds you like the best. So just as an example, let's say I found this reload sound that I really like. Then the way you're going to insert it into the gun is first click on the handle part to select that part over on the gun. And then you're going to go back to the sound and click on it. And it should insert it right inside that part. And you're going to do the same thing for the empty clip or the empty magazine sound. Just go ahead and click on the handle first and then click on the sound. One thing you might want to do with your sounds is increase the volume. So let's say for the reload sound, it was too quiet to hear. Then what you can do is you can click on it and then go down under the properties menu. And then for the volume, you can set it to the highest value by setting it equal to one. Once you get your end value that you're going to call ammo and you set the value equal to the number of bullets you want for your gun. And also once you get the sounds for your gun, we can move on to the script. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start on the local script that should be inside of the gun. This script may look a little bit different than where we left off last time, but the only changes I made was adding comments to kind of separate different sections, but I didn't actually change any of the code. So all these green sections you see here are not actually lines of code. They're just comments that you can use to separate out different chunks of code. So this first section right here I called object and sound variables, and that includes the variable for the gun and also for our gun sound. So right now the gun sound is just the sound the gun makes whenever the bullet gets fired, but we're going to go ahead and add our other two sounds now. One for the reload and one for the empty clip. To add the other sounds, we're just going to make variables for them. So let's go and start by saying local empty underscore sound is going to be equal to gun dot handle dot the name of the sound, which in our case is clip underscore empty. If you're using different sounds than the ones I'm using, then you have two different options for how you can update the code. You can either update this line right here with the name of your sound, or if you want to follow along exactly with this video, then what you can do is go over to the sounds over in the Explorer menu and rename it to exactly what I have. So for whatever sound you want for your empty magazine, rename that one to clip underscore empty. If you feel comfortable just renaming it on the script side, then you can just update this here with whatever name you see over here. All right, so let's go ahead and create a variable for the reload sound. So we'll say local reload underscore sound. And this is going to be equal to the same thing. We'll say gun dot handle and then dot the name of the sound. So in our case, it's going to be reload. And that's all we have to do for the sounds. So let's go ahead and figure out where we're going to play these sounds. So we're going to go ahead and locate the section of code right here. And this is the section of code that plays our gun sound and also triggers the remote event. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that ammo value that we created for our gun. 
And basically what we're going to be doing is checking to make sure that the ammo is greater than zero. If it is, then we'll go ahead and do this section of code. And if it's not greater than zero, which would mean the gun's out of bullets, then we'll do some other section of code. The way that's going to look in code is we're going to start with an if statement. So we want to check to make sure that the ammo's value is greater than zero. So we're going to say if gun dot ammo dot value. And we want to check to make sure that's greater than zero. And if that's true, then what we're going to do is play the gun sound and trigger the remote event. And then we're going to make an else statement. So we'll say else. And for the else statement, it's going to run whenever this statement is not true. So if the gun's ammo is not greater than zero, then it's going to go down to the else statement. So for the else statement, let's go ahead and play our empty sound by saying empty underscore sound and then colon and play. Okay, so all we did so far is divide the section into two parts. If the gun's ammo is greater than zero, then we're going to run this section of code right here. Otherwise, we're going to run this section right here. So we're either going to fire a bullet and play the gunshot sound, or we're going to play the empty sound. All right, so let's go and run the code and we'll take a look. All right, so I'm gonna start by shooting off my 10 bullets. Okay, so that's 10 bullets. So for the next one, I shouldn't create a bullet. I should just hear that empty clip sound. And you can see when I try to shoot that no bullets are created. And it may be hard to hear, but there is that other sound playing. All right, so let's go ahead and continue now and work on our reload system. Okay, so for our reload system, we're going to be using the user input service to check to see if the player presses the letter R, and then we'll give them a fresh round of bullets. So to do that, I'm going to start under the section I called user input setup. And this is just directly below the objects and sounds. So the first thing we're going to put in this section is a variable for the user input service. So we'll say local user input. This is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put user input service. After that, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And the next section that we're going to write is right below the one that we just worked on. So for this section right here, it's going to check to see if the letter R was pressed. And then it's going to give the player new bullets. To do that, we're going to start with user input. So this is storing the user input service. And then we're going to say dot and input began. Then we're going to connect a function to this. So inside the parentheses, we're going to say function. Inside the functions parentheses, we're going to pass the parameters input. And also game processed. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying if not game processed. Inside this if statement, we're going to say if input. So this is the input that gets recorded by the user input service. And then we're going to say dot user input type. So this will check the type of input. And we want to check to see if that's equal to enum dot user input type. And then we're going to say dot keyboard to check for a key press. So if some key on the keyboard was pressed, we want to check to see which one it was. So we'll do that by saying local key code. And this is going to be equal to input dot key code. And then here we're going to check to see which key was pressed by saying if key code was equal to enum dot key code dot r. And if you want to use a different letter for your reload, you'll go ahead and put that there. So if it was the letter R, then what we're going to do is we're going to play the reload sound and then set the gun's ammo back to 10. So first we're going to play the sound. So we'll say reload underscore sound colon play. And then I'm going to wait until the sound is done before I give them the ammo. So to do that, I'll say reload underscore sound dot ended. And then I'll say colon wait. So this is going to wait for the sound to finish. 
For my sound, I believe it's a couple seconds, so this can be used as your reload time. So after this sound has finished, then what I'm going to do is say gun dot ammo dot value is going to be equal to 10. Okay, so quickly let's go through this one more time. So what this is doing first is waiting for some type of input. Once that input is detected, then it's going to check to make sure that the input came from the keyboard. If it came from the keyboard, then it's going to check to see which key was pressed. If the letter R was pressed, then it's going to play the sound, wait for it to finish, and then reload the ammo. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how this works. All right, so I'm going to start by shooting off my 10 bullets. Okay, and now I should have no bullets shooting. Okay, so that part's good. So now I'm going to press the R key. Okay, so the reload sound played, and then now I can shoot more bullets. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is updating the mouse cursor. Okay, so to update the mouse cursor, the first thing we're going to do is open up the toolbox. Make sure you go to the images section, and then you can search for whatever type of cursor you want to have. I searched for cross cursor, and there's a couple different ones that you can try out. To actually use one of these cursors in the game, what you want to do is right click on the one that you want to use and then click on the last one that says copy asset and then URI. And then for now, we can just go ahead and paste it somewhere on the script. We're going to be adding a little bit more to this in just a second. But for now, we're going to start by saying local mouse is equal to game dot players dot local player. And then we're going to say colon get mouse. Next, in front of our ID, we're going to add mouse dot icon with a capital I. And we're going to set that equal to the ID. And finally, we just need to add this ID inside of quotation marks. All right, so let's go and run the game with this new icon, and then we'll try some other ones in the toolbox over here. All right, and once you're in the game, you can see the new mouse icon. All right, just for fun, let's go ahead and try out a couple different ones. Let's go ahead and try out this one right here. So to update it, go ahead and right click. You're going to click on the last one that says Copy Asset URI. You're going to select this old ID and then paste in the new one. All right, so let's go ahead and try out that one and see how it looks. All right, and this is what the new one looks like. For me, this is a little bit hard to see, but you're welcome to use whichever image you want to. All right, so for the final update for this video, let's go ahead and add a section to the code so that when the user right clicks on the mouse, it zooms in a little bit. And then when they release that part of the mouse, it zooms back out. Okay, so the zoom in and zoom out is gonna be part of the section right here, the gun equip section. To make it so that whenever the user clicks on the right part of the mouse, it zooms in. What we're gonna do is start with the mouse object. And then we're gonna say dot and then button two. So button one is the left part of the mouse. Button two is the right part. We're going to say button two dot down. And then we're going to connect this with a function. Inside this function, we're going to make a variable for the camera. So we'll say local camera is equal to game dot workspace dot current camera. So this is the camera for the user. And then we're going to say camera dot field of view. The default is 70. So if you set it to something less than 70, it's going to zoom in. If you set it to something greater than 70, it would look like it's zooming out. So let's go and say equal to and 40. And this is a number that you can play around with depending on how much zoom you want to get. For the zoom out part, it's going to be very similar. But instead of button two down, we're going to write something for button two up. Let's go ahead and just copy this section. Here we're going to say button to up. And then for this part, we're going to change the field of view back to the default, which is 70. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and see how this looks. Okay, so once you're in the game, if you click down on the right part of the mouse, you'll zoom in some. And then when you release it, you'll zoom back out.
And before we finish with this video, we're just going to fix one more thing. So this really isn't an update or a new feature. It's just a fix for something we worked on last time. So let me go ahead and start by shooting a bullet. And we can see if I'm facing this direction, it looks like the bullets shoot pretty straight. But if I turn this way, it looks like the bullets are shooting sideways. So what we're going to do is just update that really quickly so that no matter what direction I'm facing, it always looks like it's shooting straight. So to fix this is actually not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass one additional piece of information to the server. And for that, we're going to say gun dot handle dot orientation. And then on the bullet create script, we're going to receive that extra piece of information as another parameter. So for the name of it, I'm just going to say gun and then OR for orientation. And then down here for bullet.orientation, we're going to take the current orientation, which is stored in gun OR. And then we're going to add that correction vector. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look now and see how it looks. Okay, so I'll start this direction. So the bolts are shooting straight. And then I'm going to turn to the left. And we can see that no matter what direction I'm facing, they always shoot forward. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I know there's still a couple more updates that I need to do based on comments on the previous video. But if you guys have any more suggestions, please leave those in the comments. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.